We are in London in Porcolis House. We are with uh, Sham, who is from Eritrea, a young man from Eritrea who, is, uh, uh, who has come here to uh, tell his experience, his life experience, uh, to, so that uh, Britons can understand how dire is life in your country. Tell us. Um, it's kind of hard to explain in, this, in a short time how dire the situation is. Um, but people are leaving, people, young people like me, and we're here all, all over Europe and all over Africa and all over the world, really. And um, people in Britain and in many other places where they see immigrants uh, coming in and struggle to understand why people are leaving. It's uh, very much narrowed down to just extended um, hard labor or whatever else, so what's been summed down to slavery. But in reality there are uh, various numbers of um, human rights being abused in Eritrea. And uh, Make some example. Sure. Um, I'll, okay, I'll give you some examples. Um, the the right to work, you know, as a human being, you're uh, you're a creature that actually needs to work to get the food, whether it's from the earth or working in an office. Um, you don't have that right. Uh, you can work, but it's determined by the government. It tells you where to work, when to work, at what time, um, and which offices and which sectors. Um, whereas as a human being, we're not that kind of uh, creatures. Uh, but also in the Western world or in other developing countries, uh, there is a problem of uh, unemployment and sometimes uh, there are uh, uh, many people who are unemployment, a big portion of the population. So what's the difference in Eritrea? Is uh, hard labor, forced labor? Yeah, it is forced labor uh, under the pretext of uh, military service or uh, civil service. It's not a problem of unemployment. The government. Uh, this military service is still uh, very long. Uh, they did not decrease uh, the, the years of service. No, <laughs> that's the quickest uh, answer. They've been back and forth recently with uh, Europe, um, with the EU, trying to compromise, which um, many of us Eritreans understand as. Um, EU just trying to write off and tick off some boxes so it can say that uh, these people coming here, uh, these people meaning Eritreans like me, uh, fit a certain criteria, therefore they don't have to be accepted or they, they can be treated in one way rather than another. Um, the government actually rescinded from its promises anyway. Um, so the, the problem of having to do something in an indeterminate time is a real problem for a person's life. There are very crucial years of a person's life as well. Uh, when you're in your late teens, um, going into the moments where you build yourself as an individual rather than a, a child living within a family, right? So now let's make an alternate uh, history. Uh, in case uh, if you remain in Eritrea, what you, your life will be and what is uh, your life now you are not in Eritrea? If I had remained in Eritrea, most probably I would have been working in a job where the government would have sent me to do. I would not have the choice to leave that job. Um, that's if I was lucky enough not to be in the military. If I was in the military, then my proceedings, my every single step would have been seen as a martial step. So I'll be under martial law, uh, which is an attempt that you can see the government continuing to do. Um, right now because it's putting everybody uh, with a rifle at, in their home and this is just a way of controlling people and I would have been controlled just the same. Um, many other rights uh, such as rights of expressing my thoughts, uh, expressing my opinion, participating politically, uh, gathering in with friends and groups, uh, it would have been very much like the life that I did have back then which was uh, a very scary one, not free to, um, to talk and express myself, uh, not free to move, of course, uh, although th this is a point that uh, comes up uh, many times and I say to people many times, um, not all... How is your life now? How is your life now in Britain? How is my life in Britain? My life in Britain is as hard as it is for any person living in Britain, but without the, um, the lack of the human rights violations that are uh, in Eritrea. Um, now you have your status of refugee. 
Right. So I don't um, I, I don't have the status of a refugee because I had dual citizenship. Despite having dual citizenship, it was still very hard for me to leave because my dual citizenship was not recognized back then, and we had to fight really hard for me to be recognized. So here, I don't live uh, as Eritrean. I live uh, using my other citizenship. The last thing, uh, what's your commitment uh, for the future of your native country? My commitment is just participating as, a, as an individual part of, a, of the people. I think that's most that we can do uh, until we have a functioning government system where people can be elected and everything. Not that I want to, but we're not, not, we're not even at that level, so we just need to be active as people. But now you are committed to expose the problems of your country and uh, you hope for a change. I do hope for change. And um, the problems that are happening in my country are, have been exposed. There's very little uh, news anymore, unfortunately, unless it's some atrocity that the government does uh, from now in the future. People just need to be dedicated to go and read what, peop uh, what other people have done. You know, people put a lot of work behind it. So um, I'm dedicated to just push this forward rather than reinvent the wheel. I don't have to. They're, what they've done is just so blatant and it's well recorded if you intend to go and find out. So the only hope is uh, to leave the country now for the people? It depends what an individual wants to do. If an individual uh, wants to just n not, uh, this, is very, this is very hard. Um, it depends what the people, what the person hopes for, right? If the person has aims and goals in participating in the politics of Eritrea, then they have to leave. If they try and stay there, they'll be pretty much killed or made a desaparecido. Um, I would not, in, in my mind, just think of asking anybody who was actually there to risk their life. Unless they want to risk their life and speak out, I just can't. Um, so the hopes it depends what they are. If they leave, they might be able to participate politically with their people. Inside Eritrea, they will not be able to. People are fearing of revolutions and whatever. I hope that uh, there are nonviolent ways of solving this.